Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to service this morning. My name's Rob Clegg, and I'm the senior pastor of the Celebration Center of Belpre, Ohio. And we just want to encourage you today to join into this service. We have a special time of worship today. I want to ask you to gather your families and get ready. Uh, sit down in your living rooms. I want to assure you that this service is not set up to be a concert for you, but it's a time when we join together in worship. So as Justin and Malcolm come to sing to you in the next few minutes, we want to ask you to sing with us today. We may be separated by time and distance, but the reality is in the Spirit, we're not separated at all. I want to share with you a scripture as we get started this morning. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want you to understand something this morning. God is not saying for everything give thanks. We are not to give thanks for the coronavirus or the problems that it has caused. But in the middle of this, even with things being bad around us, God expects us to stay in an attitude of worship and thanksgiving. It is not for all things that we give thanks, but it's in all things. So right now as you're gathered there, I want you to get your heart prepared to begin to worship the Lord and take a few moments this morning with your family and just simply lift your praise to God. Let me pray for you and we'll get started. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just bless you and magnify you this morning. And our faith is firmly founded in you, sir, and all that you can do. We praise you today for your worthy. I pray over everybody listening to this today, and I ask you to just invade their quiet place right there in their home, that the Holy Spirit of God would begin to move on your people. And we praise you and honor you, sir, that you are not limited by distance. We ask you today, Lord, to receive our worship, to receive our praise, for truly you are worthy. Glory to God. All glory belongs to you. Now as Justin gets ready to come, I'm going to ask you right now to share this on Facebook and any other place that you can so that we can get as many people in the presence of the Lord this morning as possible. God bless you. I'll see you in just a little bit. I was buried beneath my shame carry that kind of weight it was my turn till I met you and I was breathing but not alive and all my failures I tried to hide it was my turn till I met you cause when you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day and now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. When I met you, cause when you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. 
see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, and you turn it for good. God of creation, and there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak. A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so alive I could see your heart in everything you made Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises so alive, God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature so alive, I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you so alive. God of salvation, you chased out my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear 
Where you lost your life so I can find mine here If you left the grave behind you so alive I can see your heart in everything you've done Every part, design, and work of art called love if you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart in every billion ways. Every precious child, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again 100 billion times But what measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves the one behind Praise the Lord. What an awesome time in the presence of the Lord this morning. And I just wanted to come in this attitude of worship. And I want to share something with you very quickly, and we'll get right back into Malcolm uh, leading us into worship. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says this. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And I, I think about the times when we've been gathered in this sanctuary and... Uh, our kids have been with us, and to watch our children do what we do. Uh, I remember specifically Barry Moss standing up here with Jason. I would see Barry raise his hands in worship to the Lord and look over, and little Jace, just three years old, would have his hands lifted to heaven. And It's exactly what this passage of Scripture is talking about, to be imitators of God. Can you imagine that God has asked us to act like He does? There is not a higher honor or blessing to man. And let me say this to you this morning, that God is a giver. Of everything we see God do, God is a giver in every direction. The Bible says He sends His rain on the just and the unjust. In other words, He's always, always blessing people. And for you and I to come in and be imitators of Him, it's right that now we would bring an offering before the Lord. We see that in the life of the Lord Jesus as He sent as a sacrifice and an offering for the souls of men. What better way for you and I to respond this morning than by bringing our tithes and offerings before a holy God. And right there where you are, I believe that God will receive from you the offering that you give. If you want to, you can make out a check to the Celebration Center of Belpre, or you can simply go on Easy Tithe and send it in that way, however you see fit. I also want to remind you that you're not limited to just giving to a church. There's people in your community that you can reach out to and show the love of God by simply becoming an imitator of of God. Walk like He walks. Act like He walks. Do the kind of things that you see Him do in Scripture, and, and you will fulfill this Scripture that the Apostle Paul brought to the church. Be imitators of God and walk in love. Let everything you and I do, do out of a heart of love for Almighty God. Listen, right there, get your offering if you've already sent it in. God knows that, and let's just take a moment and pray and receive, uh, or excuse me, and give this offering to the Lord, and I believe that He'll receive it from your hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just bless You and magnify You today, and we bring an offering before You today, sir, because You and You alone are worthy of that kind of praise and worship. And today we do it willingly with a joyful heart Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We praise your holy name. Now, before we go back to worship, let me remind you of simply three things. Number one, please share this on your Facebook. Number two, we're asking you to comment. 
or like or show us that you're there. Comment on it. Tell us, tell us you're watching. Tell us something. Tell us what the Lord's doing in your life right at this moment. And don't forget to like this post. God bless you. We love you. Let's go back and worship the Lord some more. forgot there is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life and in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense so i come to tell you he's alive to tell you that he dries every tear that falls so i've come to tell you that he saves to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. There's a blood, it sights the blind, it heals the sick, the lonely finds, it has the power to free the bound. As chains they fall upon the ground, so pour it out to cleanse my soul and let its liquid glory flow because it lives to make me whole. I owe my life, I owe my all. So I've come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he dries every tear that falls. So I've come to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. This life, this prize, this blood, this one, this life, this prize, this blood, the blood, nothing but the blood, and what can make me whole again? 
Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. There is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he dries every tear that falls. So I've come to tell you that he saved to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. So I've come to tell you he's alive. are saved, find the way at the sound of your great name, all condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your great name. And every fear has no place at the sound of your great name. The enemy, he has to leave at the sound of your great name. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. And all the world will praise your great name. Your great name. the sound of your great name. Hungry souls receive grace at the sound of your great name. The fatherless find their rest at the sound of your great name. The sick are healed and the dead are raised at the sound of your great name. Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name, 
your great name. Redeemer, my healer, Lord Almighty. Defender, my Savior, you are my King. Redeemer, my healer, Lord Almighty. Defender, my Savior, you are my King, Redeemer, my Healer, Lord Almighty, Defender, my Savior, you are my King. Sing the name of Jesus. Worship the name of Jesus. We bow before King Jesus. There's no other name but Jesus. Sing the name of Jesus. Worship the name of Jesus. We bow before King Jesus. There's no other name but Jesus. We sing, sing the name of Jesus. We worship, we worship the name of Jesus. We bow. We bow before King Jesus, no other, there's no other name like Jesus, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us, Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. All the world will praise your great name, your great name, your great name, your great name. Amen. Let's just praise the Lord this morning for he is great. Amen. His name is to be lifted up. We just thank you for that this morning, Lord, for truly God, you are worthy. This morning, we're going to be reading out of Philippians chapter three. If you'd like to get your Bibles and turn there, that would be great. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evildoers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, of Hebrew, of the Hebrews, concerning the law a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I am suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who also walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is in their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Amen. Let my 
song, join the one that never ends, because he lives, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the just because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, my fear is gone. Because I know He holds my future. My life is worth the living just because He lives. Because I know Just because he lives. And you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. I, I just want to say again that we are so happy that you've joined us for church this morning. Uh, we're happy that we get to do this together. We were talking the other day about how uh, if, if we would have had this lockdown 10, 15 years ago, we would have not been able to do this together. And we just praise God that we live in a time where the church can still thrive and get together, even through technology, uh, in a time like this. And we're very thankful that you've chosen to join us this morning. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name's Ryan Clegg. I'm the assistant pastor here at the Celebration Center, and I want to take a few moments and just share an encouraging word with you. And actually, the last song that we sang, Because He Lives, uh, basically preached my whole message that I'm going to speak to you today. And uh, I, I am so thankful that we serve a God that we know is alive, we're not looking towards somebody who has died, but he has been risen with resurrection power, and he sits at the right hand of God, and he intercedes for each and every one of us today. And I am encouraged by that, and I am grateful for that. And last week, we talked a little bit about the power of the resurrection, and today, we're going to talk about what our response is to that resurrection, to that power of his resurrection. And so I'd like to take a moment and read. Well, I know we read all of Philippians 3, but I'm going to start in verse 12, and we're going to read through verse 16, and then we're going to go back and unpack these as we spend time together. Uh, so Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 says this. The Apostle Paul writes, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal 
for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything, uh, or excuse me, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today that we get to approach you thanks to Jesus dying on the cross for us and being resurrected from the dead. We come humbly before you and your word, and we ask you, Lord, to teach us, to make us more like you, to let your word be planted deep inside our hearts and to make our hearts good ground so that we can hear the word and not only hear it, but then go and live the word out. I ask you to help us, each and every one, to do that so that we can not only live for you and not only expand your kingdom, but that we might grasp the prize at the end of our lives. We thank you, we praise you in all things, in Jesus' name, and amen. I really enjoy movies. And uh, probably one of my favorite movie series um, of all time is the Rocky movie series. I love the Rocky movies. I've watched them a billion times. I'm waiting. I have a three-year-old son. His name's Oliver. I'm waiting till the day that he's old enough that he won't be bored by the first Rocky movie and that we can watch those together because they just have some of the greatest life lessons in those movies. They're fantastic movies. I would actually encourage any Christian to watch those, except for Rocky V. It's a terrible film. But the rest of them are really, really good. And one of my favorite things, one of the things that always draws me to Rocky isn't the fact that at the end of the movie he's going to win. Spoiler alert, except for movie one. Um, it's not that he's going to win. It's the humility that Rocky walks in. Rocky is a good fighter. And he could be arrogant about the things that he is able to do. But you never see Rocky as arrogant. You never see him that way. He's always humble. And what I mean by that is, he doesn't just assume that he can do whatever he's going to do without any training, without going through anything. Actually, the most famous scenes in Rocky movies aren't necessarily the fight scenes. It's always the 15-minute training sequences that Rocky goes through. Rocky starts off in the movies as a fighter. He's fighting some, but then he gets a chance to fight the heavyweight, and he realizes, man, I'm not good enough to do that right now. I need to go through some intense training. I need to train before I get in the ring with this person because I am good, but I'm not where I need to be yet. And so we see Rocky, he lifts big chains. Uh, in, in Rocky IV, he's lifting uh, big logs and, and, and chopping trees down and doing all sorts of things, just trying to get ready for the biggest fight of his life. And I think that that is something that we need to bring into our Christian mentality today, is that we need to humble ourselves and realize that we have things in our lives that we need to work on, each and every one of us. Now, the difference between us and Rocky is, is Rocky is training on his own strength, whereas we have the strength of God backing us, and when we decide to press forward into something, we're not doing it by ourselves, but we're doing it by that resurrection power that we talked about last week. So, let's go down through this scripture before I accidentally preach in 10 minutes everything that I have come to say to you. Let's go back to verse 12. It says, Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Sometimes when we read scripture, we forget to look at the history of this scripture or who's writing this scripture. But the Apostle Paul is writing this to the Philippian church. He says, not that I believe that I have already obtained the resurrection at the end. Not that I believe that I am already perfected. Not that I'm already perfect. The Apostle Paul says that. The man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. The man who probably, besides Jesus, is the reason that you're sitting in church today. He writes from a place of humility saying, I know that I have not obtained this yet. I know that I am not perfect. 
That is a different, listen friends, that is a different message than the message that is preached in modern Christianity today where we think that just because Jesus died and we come and said a prayer once, now God's got it and we can do whatever we want. We're good with God. We said a prayer one time. We're good with Him. We're as close to perfect as we're going to get. No. No. That is not the message that the Apostle Paul brings in this Scripture. He says, I know that I am not perfect. I know that I have yet to attain this, but I press on to make it my own. I press on to make it my own. I go towards God. I press towards Him so that I can obtain the prize. One interesting thing that I, was, that I found when I was studying this scripture is that uh, the word press here is a very strange word. And what I mean by that is it's very rarely, um, it is very rarely translated as press. It's more often translated as persecution or to persecute. And so the picture that Paul is painting here, he's writing to a people that lived in a time where they were hunted down. And he says, like those people that are hunting you down to try to kill you, with that same passion and zeal, hunt down the things of God. Press on to those things. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made me His own. Friends, Christ making you His own isn't the end of the story. He has made you His own, and now out of our thankfulness, out of our joy, because we could not come to God ourselves, out of those things, we press further on and do the things that Christ has asked us to do. Because He has made me His own, I will hunt after Him. I will go after Him. I will walk and press into the ways that He would have me live my life. I will do the things that He asks me to do. And so the question is, what is Christ asking us to do today? How is Christ asking us to walk today? Well, I can give you a few easy things. I don't know everything that God's called you to do. You might be called to be an evangelist. You might be called to be a pastor. But I can tell you that Christ has asked every Christian to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. I can tell you that Christ has asked every Christian to love God with all your heart, strength, and mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And so, I am going to then, like the Apostle Paul, press into those things. Even when I don't want to do them, I'm going to press into them. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made me His own. He paid the ultimate price for me. He rose from the dead so that I could be justified from my sins. And now nothing is going to stop me from pressing in to living the life that God would have me live. And so in verse 13, he goes on, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. He, he comes back at that again. Listen, I have not done this. I have not reached this point yet. I, I, even I think that this sentence actually says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. I haven't done this. Jesus is doing this through me. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I want you to know that today through the power of the resurrection, through the washing of the blood of Jesus, your history before Christ doesn't matter anymore. It's gone. Maybe you did some horrible things. I know I have done horrible things. Maybe you're like me and you've done horrible things. Those are gone now. And we need to forget those. That baggage that we carry on our back, that can keep us from walking in the things that God would have us walk in. And so Paul says, I cast those things aside. I lay them down. I forget what is behind me so that I might press on. Uh, or excuse me, so that I might strain forward to what lies ahead. And you say, well, that's pretty easy for somebody like the Apostle Paul to write. You just told us how cool of a guy he was. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Yeah. But one thing that we forget about the Apostle Paul is one thing that he's talking about that he has to lay down and forget is the fact that before he met Christ, he was persecuting the church. 
Now, we're not talking, and I don't mean this mean, God's saving power is much greater than we think that it is. Because we're not talking about a normal sinner. We're not talking about somebody who's mean sometimes or, or maybe even we think is a good person. They just don't know Jesus. We're talking about a person who physically went out and killed Christians, killed innocent people. He was so bad that Jesus had to stop him himself. He stops him on the road to Damascus, knocks him off of a donkey, blinds him, and tells him to quit persecuting his church. Can you imagine the baggage that you would carry after coming to Christ, knowing that before you came to Christ, you were actively killing his people? That's some major baggage. And so when the Apostle Paul writes this, it's not a pretty statement. It's not uh, something that he thought of that would look good on a cup at a Christian store. He's saying, I actively, every day of my life, I forget those things that are behind me, and I strain towards the goal. Today, maybe there's something in your life that is trying to keep you. Maybe today there's something in your life that Satan keeps trying to whisper in your ear to get you to stop doing or make you feel unworthy. But I want you to know that if Christ can save somebody like the Apostle Paul and use him for the immense goodness that he used him for, Christ can clean your conscience today. Christ can give you the power to walk away from the things that are in your past and in my past. I get hope from reading this from the Apostle Paul because he wasn't a super holy figure all of his life. He did bad things. And when he tells me that he can forget, I know that Christ can forgive me and I can move on. And I can tell Satan to be quiet. Now, I might have to do it several times. I might have to do it every day of my life. But I have that power through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, Paul says, I forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you something that I think is wrong in uh, the, the American church today. I think one of the things that we've gotten wrong recently is that we no longer look towards heaven and salvation and eternity with Christ as a prize. We no longer place that sort of value on those things. We've actually put our eyes too much on things on this earth trying to have everything correct here, trying to have everything right here, have everything in place. I need this. I need my perfect family. I need um, uh, the perfect job. I need my finances, my bank account. These are the things that Christ is concerned with. But over and over in Scripture, Christ tells us that the kingdom of God is the greatest treasure to be valued. Paul writes that here. I press on. That's the same word for persecution. I hunt down. I press towards the goal for the prize. He's using uh, athletics as a thing. He's saying, I press on towards that goal. I race to the finish line with everything in me so that I can obtain the prize. We see this throughout all of Jesus' teaching where he talks about the kingdom of God is like the most valuable pearl that a man hid in a field and then sold everything that he had so that he might obtain the kingdom of God. Not that he could have a better life on earth, but that he could obtain. I'll give up anything is what Jesus said. That's how much he says the kingdom of God is worth. I'll give up everything. Listen, that perfect job, I don't have to have it. As long as I can get the prize at the end of my life of being in the kingdom of God, I don't have to have that. My family life might not be perfect. I'm, I mean, I'm not talking about your family being unsaved. We need to try to actively get our family saved. But my family life might not be perfect, but I'm still going to strain towards the goal so that I can get that prize. We have forgotten that heaven is valuable. We have tried to hold on to this life so much that we have forgotten. We don't have the same concept that the Apostle Paul had where he says, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He says that in Philippians, earlier in Philippians. He says, to live is Christ and to die is gain 
gain. It's better that I die because I get to go to the reward of living in the presence of Jesus Christ for all of eternity. And so, we need to refocus our lives today. And through the resurrection power of Jesus, we can. But we need to refocus our lives today so that way we quit looking at the external here and we finish the race well. There are things that Christ expects from us. We have not obtained yet. If the Apostle Paul writes that he has not obtained and he's not perfect, I dare say that none of us have obtained yet and are perfect yet. But we need to press on. Even when it doesn't feel good, that's when you need to the most. Um, I talked about the Rocky movies just a second ago. The reason I'm not built like Sylvester Stallone is because every time I've went to work out, I work out for two days, and then the second day I hurt so bad that I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm not, I don't want to put myself through this. This hurts. And the reason I don't look like Sylvester Stallone is because I gave up. I don't, I don't have that prize right now because when it hurt is when I needed to the most, but when it hurt is when I stopped doing it. And so, when we're talking about obtaining the prize here through the resurrection of Christ, I'm talking about doing these things even when we don't want to do them. That's the most important time to do them. Everybody can sing praises to Jesus on a good day. Everybody can be kind to people when things are working right in their life, when everything's snapping into place like it should, when everything's going smooth and all of our plans are uninterrupted. We can be super nice to people right then. It's when our day's not going well. It's when things aren't snapping into place that Christ is saying, hey, you need to be kind to the people around you. You need to walk in love and in mercy right now. Mercy doesn't matter if everybody's doing everything right. Mercy matters when people are doing things wrong. And so we have to take an inventory of our lives. We have to see what's wrong in us and then press towards making those things right. That's exactly what Rocky did in the movies. If you watch the movies, every movie except for one and two, he's fighting a different person and they all have different strengths, and he has weaknesses, and he starts working on those things so that he can overcome these people. And that's what we have to look at in our life. We have to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, one of the greatest gifts God's ever given us, and tell him, or, or, and ask him to show us the weaknesses that we have in our lives so that way we may work on those weaknesses. So that way we can figure out how to overcome those weaknesses through the power of Jesus. Now, like the song said, that I said basically preach my message for me. Because he lives, because he has resurrected, and he sits at God's right hand, because he has power over sin and death, we can do these things because of him. Now, uh, when I say I have a weakness, I have tried to overcome weaknesses in my life on my own before, and it never ends well. It never ends well. But when I put my reliance on Christ is when I can overcome the things that I face in my life. Listen to me. Paul writes in another book, he says, when I am weak, then he is strong. When I press towards him in my weakness, when I press towards him in my weakness, he fills that gap. Jesus is here, I'm here, and in my weakness I make it here, and Jesus meets me all the way with his power. And He helps me to overcome the things that are in my life that need overcome. Friends, that's what the power of Jesus is for. We, we've all been looking. Listen, I, I'm, I, I'm not downing the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in them, and they are legitimate when they are legitimate. But we have focused on thinking that that is the power of God. That is the height. But no, friend, the best thing that the power of God can do is to take a sinner and turn him into a saint. It's to take a person that is imperfect and to work on him and perfect him. And I've said this in front of our church before, and I want to say it today. 
we spend our time with the power of God. Uh, Any time that we're sick, we grab the Bible, and there's a handful of verses that we like to repeat over ourselves. I'm not down in that. That's a good thing. Uh, that uh, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, and, and things like that. Uh, by his stripes I was healed. And we, we focus on these things, and, and we become so laser beam focused to get our healing in our physical body. I think it's time that the church does that for the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, too. Maybe I'm not a kind person. Maybe I'm a kind of a gruff person, not a kind person at all. I think Christ would appreciate it in our lives if we found verses that said that we could walk in kindness and we started saying, you know what, God? I'm not there, but the Bible says that I can do this, and so I'm going to confess that I am a kind person over my life. Maybe I'm not patient. Maybe I need help with those things. I'm going to confess. When the Bible tells me to do something, it gives me the power to do it. So if I'm not patient, but the Bible says to be patient, God has given power for me to walk in His ways. And so therefore, I'm going to say I'm a patient person. I walk in patience. I walk in long-suffering. And so today, I want to encourage you that whatever God is asking from you, because He lives, you can do it. You can do it. Take an inventory of your life today. Find out your weak spots. And invite Christ in so that we can press towards that prize. So that at the end of our lives, we might walk up to Christ and He says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the words that I want to hear. And listen, this is the cool thing. In that, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. I am faithful to God. Listen to this. This blew my mind. I was thinking about it uh, when I was during praise and worship. I am faithful to God only because God is faithful to me. Man, that just, that, I don't know, that did something for me. I, I, if God was not faithful to me, I could not be faithful to him. And so when I walk up and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant, I am only faithful because he has been faithful. So it's not something that we can brag about. But it is words that I want to hear. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads real quick. And I want to pray over everybody. Father God, We come before you humbly again. We approach you knowing that we need you every second of our lives. We thank you, Father, for dying on the cross, or Jesus for dying on the cross for us and and raising from the dead. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to put the resurrection power to work in our lives so that we may be changed completely. Lord, we all have weaknesses in our lives. I ask you to show each and every one of us what those individual weaknesses are and help us to work on those things in your power so that at the end of our lives, we can obtain the prize before us, eternity with you. We thank you. We give you praise. We thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your reminders your conviction. We thank you for all of those things, Lord. We ask you to help us become like you so that we can affect the world around us for you. Also, Father, put it in our minds that heaven is a prize to be valued. Eternity with you is a prize to want and desire above everything else, Father God. Let us become more heavenly minded than we have been so that we strive to be like you. As, and as the Apostle Paul says, the bad things in our past help us to be able to put them behind us knowing that you have washed us clean of our sins so that we can effectively run the race. We praise you, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. One last thing, and then we're going to worship with Justin again. Um, Maybe you don't know Christ today. I want to offer you the opportunity to know him. It's very simple. It's not hard. And listen, Christ wants you 
Maybe you think, uh, I'm a really bad sinner. I don't, I, I don't know if God would want me. Listen, God wanted the Apostle Paul, and he was killing Christians. If he wants him, he wants you. I want you to know that. If he wants him, he wants you. If he wants me, he wants you. So today, you're not beyond God's reach. You're not beyond God's saving power. He wants you. And today, your sins can be washed clean. And you can serve a risen Savior who will help you on your journey just like I've preached this morning. So today I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. If you want to know Jesus, just repeat this prayer after me. It, uh, listen to the words, believe what it says, repeat this prayer, and then send us a message. We have something we'd like to get into your hands. Uh, if you give your life to Christ, we have a gift we'd like to get into your hands. But um, just, just say this with us and let us know that you've become a part of the family. Father God, we thank you today for dying on the cross and, rise, and raising from the dead. We believe that you died for our sins and we believe that you rose for our justification. We came to you a sinner and now we are a saint. We give our lives to you we give our hope and our trust to you. And we promise to live our lives for you for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, and amen. Again, if you prayed that prayer, you are a part of God's family today. Get a hold of us and let us know if you have. We're so thankful, and we will praise and rejoice with you. If you will uh, turn your attention with me to Justin, we're going to praise and worship and then close the service today. Thank you. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice And he wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice And how great is our God Sing with me how great Hey. 
see how great, how great is our God. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in today, and uh, we're just blessed to have you here. Um, we all miss you so much. Um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer, and then we'll dismiss, and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Dearly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the word that was brought and uh, the worship that we were able to do together, Lord God, remotely. And I just ask you to be with your people, Lord God, and bless this Sunday afternoon and just um, protect them, angels being encamped around them, Lord God. And we thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.